We're supposed to be best friends. Yeah, she's a good dog. Speaker. But like any relationship, <laughs> communication can be rough. Sometimes she'll just whine. In and out of bed all night drives my wife crazy. If only dogs could speak. <laughs> I, I mean talk. They may not be able to speak English, but they certainly communicate, and they communicate a lot. <laughs> Dr. Megan Heron is a professor and behavioral specialist at the Ohio State University College of Veterinary Medicine. So that deeper, more guttural um, bark is probably one of a dog who's feeling a little more threatened. And then you have your higher pitched yips out of excitement, but could also potentially be of distress. Interpretation depends on the pet. For the head tilt, too, could be curiosity or attention seeking. He'll turn something up in the house and I'm like, what was this for? He's like, what, was I not supposed to, I not supposed to do this? <laughs> you know, like. But other canine communication is absolutely universal, says Dr. Heron. Once you can read it, it's like this hidden language that you can see all of a sudden. Squirrel! Beyond basic instincts, dogs can learn well over 150 words. Memories, absolutely. You know, we, we see PTSD in dogs. But then you also think about positive memories. There's neurochemicals that are released and they're gonna remember that. Dreams and nightmares too. The way they process emotions is actually essentially identical in dogs and in people. We just express ourselves differently. We as human beings, we act like that very rude dog at the dog park and we say, hi dog, we make eye contact, we bend and then we reach our hand right on top of their head, which is the worst thing we can do to a dog that we don't know that may not find us to be all that safe. <laughs> Causing them to become aggressive or cower. If they roll over to show their belly, they're signaling to them, whoa, I'm feeling a little bit threatened and I need you to back off. Wait, 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 rolling over doesn't mean belly rub? I have had a lot of people tell me, well, doc, he rolled over for a belly rub and I went to scratch him and he bit me. Another one, another one of those signals that we often misread as people. Unless you know the dog and that they like a belly rub, she says being indirect is best. Turn your body to the side, pat your leg and encourage them to come to you. And a sure sign they're happy is called a play bow. The paws down, rump in the air, tails wiggling. And that is the universal sign between dogs that says, I'm not a threat to you. My intentions are friendly right now. However, never, never ever trust a wagging tail. That's another myth. So wagging tail universally means I'm ready. So I, that could be I'm ready to interact in a friendly way. I'm ready for you to pet me. It can also mean I'm ready for you to go away or I'm ready to bite you. Depends on the rest of the body. Are they tense or loosey-goosey? Make friends. Okay, make friends. So the tail is wagging, the rump is wagging, the shoulders are wagging, the head is going. There's just not an inch of their body that's not moving in synchrony with that tail. That's a pretty trustworthy wag. There was a, a recent study published where they looked at oxytocin levels both in people and in dogs and what they found is that that gazing upon each other led to an increase in oxytocin in both of their uh, bodies and oxytocin is sort of the the bonding or the love hormone Aww. but there's a catch it only happens if you're already bonded uh oh there's a fight wait a Eyeballing an unfamiliar dog is dangerous. Sometimes you'll see them give you the whale eye. Might turn his head to the side because he's really trying to avoid the confrontation. But he's not going to take his eye off of you, which is usually a sign that you need to back off. That dog is not feeling comfortable with you and, and potentially may bite. She says it happened during a live newscast in Colorado. You're going to see those ears start to go back. The Mastiff's pupils dilate. And you see those eyes start to open wide. It's not hot, but he's panting, licking his lips and licking the air. I see more of the mouth, more of the teeth. And when the anchor goes in for a kiss. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's all about feeling threatened. If you recognize that that sort of behavior, let's say a dog is lunging and barking at a stranger coming towards them, they're not trying to be bad, they're not trying to be mean, they're not being dominant, they just find that person scary. A personality thing, she says. <laughs> I think every individual dog, based on their genetics and their very early environmental experience, is going to find certain people safer, certain people more appealing than others. And then there's some dogs who might be afraid of a person for no reason. Oh, good boy. The same way humans connect with each other. Except a dog's love is always unconditional. Who wants the ball? Me! Hi, 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 hi.
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, is anybody else going to give you a reaction like that? In Columbus, Suzanne Stratford, Fox 8 News.